Hi and welcome to Curtis Stage Video Tutorials. Today's tutorial is on brushes in Photoshop. It's kind of a basic tutorial to get you kind of acquainted with the brushes, how we make our own brushes. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be looking at the options bar, how to modify your brush within that. Then we're going to look at the brush panel and how we can really modify our brushes in the brush panel. And then we're going to look at creating our own brush tips. So that's very exciting. Let's get started. Okay, so now that we have Photoshop open, um, I, you can see that I have a plain white background in my layers panel here, and that's going to be best for us seeing the brush that we're going to create or the brushes that we're going to create. Um, so let's go over to the tools bar, and you'll see that there is a paintbrush over there. If you hold that down, you'll hold your mouse down on it, you're going to see that there's some other uh, brushes, even a pencil in here. Uh, the mixer brush is really, really cool. We're not going to get into that in this tutorial. That'll be in another one and the color replacement tool, but we're going to use the basic brush tool. So let's click on that. And then I want to draw your attention up to the options bar up on the top of Photoshop. With the options bar, we have a couple things that we need to look at before we get started. First off, this is where we're going to select our brush. But before that, we want to make sure that right at the start, our mode is normal. These are blend modes. And we'll get into these in a minute, but we want to make sure that we're starting off with our mode being normal. We also want to start off with our opacity being 100% and our flow being 100%. We're going to talk about those in a second. All right, so let's go back. Once you've got that setting happening, when you go back here to the actual brushes, you'll click this little triangle right here, and it'll open up the brushes. And you're going to see we have some settings in here. First of all, we have size and pixels, and we have the hardness of your brush, either if it's at 0%, that means the brush is feathered. And if it's at 100%, that means the brush has a hard edge to it. So I'm going to leave my brush at 100% for right now. Uh, you'll notice that I can pick a few of these first brushes, and they'll have those settings already built into them in terms of the hardness or the feathering. Now, these first brushes are basic brushes in Photoshop. Uh, this is where I like to start. You'll notice some of these other brushes that actually look like real paint brushes and airbrushes. These are for the mixing brush tool that I talked about a second ago. If I look in my paint brushes, again down in here, this mixer brush tool, that's where you'll use these kind of specialty brushes in this area right here. They don't work so well on their own. They work really well with the mixing brush. All right, so let's pick one of these brushes. I'm going to pick this one with the hardness at 100%. My size is around 90 pixels. It, my, I decided to make the color of my brush uh, black. And where can I do that? That's down in the bottom of the options bar. If you look down in here, we've got our options, and I can set this to black and white. And my foreground color is the, is the box that's on top, and I want that to be black. It could be any color I want, but I'm going to start off with black for now. All right. So what we want to do is if I hover my mouse over the canvas, you're going to see your brush tip size right off the bat. Now, if I want this bigger or smaller, I can change that right up here in the options bar. Or better yet, what I like to do, let me click that and close it, is use my keyboard. And on the keyboard, I can use the curly brackets either right or left. So if I click the right curly bracket, and I'm doing that right now, you can't see it. But if I click the right curly bracket, my brush is going to get bigger. And if I click the left curly bracket, my brush is going to get smaller. So I want to have my brush around 90 pixels for what we're doing here. My canvas is 5 inches by 5 inches at 200 dpi if you're following along. So if you're setting up a new document with a white background. All right. So if I paint with this brush, you'll see that it's going to kind of give me a solid black uh, line, um, you know, kind of in the same shape that my brush is. Now, I'm going to undo that, Command-Z. If I just click once on my canvas, I get this round circle. Well, that's my brush tip. So that's the actual tip of the brush. If I paint, it's going to multiply that tip, and you can kind of see the edges of the circle there. So it's going to kind of paint with that tip. Let me show you a couple other tips that are pre-made within Photoshop. So if I click over here, and these brushes kind of come with Photoshop automatically. So if I click down in this area and I pick one of these pre-made brushes, and I'll need to get this brush size a little bit bigger so we can see it, you'll notice that if I click once, that brush tip looks kind of like a, I don't know, like a cloud or something like that. It looks like it's 
kind of, or maybe a paint splatter or something like that. If I click once, that's the brush tip, but I can paint with this brush as well. So when I paint with it, I get that effect. I'm going to Command Z a couple times and get rid of these. So I can pick kind of some of the specialty brushes that are down in this area. They even have some that look like real objects. Uh, for instance, on here I could, you know, kind of pick leaves. I don't use these very much, but you can kind of see what those do. I'm going to undo that. So you can pick different kinds of brushes down in this area that are pre-made, and you can increase their size with the size tool right here in the options bar, and you can kind of paint with them, and it'll give you different shapes. They're supposed to be kind of like charcoal or paint or whatever. They're supposed to give you actual kind of painting techniques possibilities. Now let's say I want to add to this brush selection. Well, there's two ways that I can do it. Well, three ways I can do it. First way is Photoshop has a lot more brushes built in, but they don't load them in when you first open up Photoshop. You have to go up to the right-hand corner up here, this little gear. When you click that, you're going to see all the brushes that they have in your brushes folder existing on your computer when you install Photoshop. They don't load them all into the brushes panel, though. I have no idea why. Uh, but you can see that if I go over here and I click, let's say, Drop Shadow Brushes, it'll ask me what I want to do. If I want to, I can click OK, but I want to append. So I want to do that and it'll add to my brush list. And here they are. They show up down at the bottom. So if I click one of those and let me increase the size, then you're going to see that it's kind of, kind of a square brush. And let me do a couple other ones here. Let me add some more to this list. So I open up my options panel, click this little gear, and I'm going to go to, let's see, um, thick heavy brushes. So I'll append that. And when I go down in here, you'll see it gives me the new in the list. It gives me an additional brushes to the list. And then when I paint with these, that's what that looks like. Pretty cool. So you can see that looks kind of like a real paintbrush. And if I'm painting with a tablet, let's say like a Wacom tablet, then you've got a lot of control with these brushes. It's really nice. Okay, so I'm going to undo that. Now let's look over here. We've got, now we know how to add brushes with this little gear right here. We can also make our own brushes, which we'll get to in a second. And we can also download brushes from the internet. There's lots of sites that are great for downloads. And one that I like is called Brush King. But there's many other ones where you can download pre-made brushes that other Photoshop artists have developed. And they're great to use in your projects. Most of them are free for you to use in your projects. So you can look for those online. And then you can install them, and they'll show up right inside your brush panel. All right, so let's look at some of these other things in the options bar. Our blend mode, we'll get to, let's look at that. If I go here and I'm going to change colors to, let's say, a red, and I paint with this in normal, you're just going to see kind of, there I've got some paint strokes happening. Now I'm going to change my color back down in my toolbar to, let's say, a green or something like that. And then I go to my blend mode, and I'll switch this to, let's say, one of these other ones, let's say, like Difference. And then when I paint with green, look what happens. It's going to actually kind of change what this looks like on the screen. It's going to blend these two brushes together where it overlaps. It creates some cool effects. It's no longer green anymore. The Difference, let's paint with another one. If I go to, let's say, Soft Light and Paint, I'm going to increase my brush size here and paint across. You're not going to see anything really in the white area, but you'll notice that the soft light is adding additional paint to the areas that I've already painted. So what blend modes do are they're composites. What that does is it kind of takes two objects and blends them together into a new composite image. So if I've got, um, let me go back to normal, and get kind of a thick uh, green going on in here. And then let me go back to my blend mode and switch. And, and I'm all doing this on one layer, by the way. Normally I like to paint in multiple layers, but for this technique I can do this all in one layer. So let's go to hard light, and then when I paint with that, you're going to see kind of how that blends. So where it hits the green that I painted earlier, it gets darker, and then where it's over the white, the hard light becomes kind of lighter. And switch some of these other. So it's kind of fun to play around with these. If I go to Color Dodge and switch my color and to yellow, and then I've got this. 
and where it kind of goes through to the background, you kind of see, let me go to multiply, and multiply will only paint in the white, and so it's kind of fun to play around and see what these kind of things do. Vivid light, let me switch the color here to blue and then change my brush with my, with my, um, so look at this, I'm painting with blue and with vivid light, it looks like it's white, but wherever there is white on the screen, it's gonna, you're gonna see that blue. That's pretty cool, or wherever there's dark. So where there is dark or white, I'm going to see that blue. So you can get some really cool effects with these blend modes. Again, it's kind of trial and error to see what happens. Uh, one thing to note is that this section right here knocks out any whites on the canvas, and this section right here knocks out any blacks on, the, on your canvas. Or in other words, this section knocks out light colors and leaves darks, and this section knocks out dark colors and leaves lights. So that's a good thing to remember in these two sections. This section right here is kind of a blend of dark and light. And so then, and then down here is kind of just funkiness where you get in here and you've got hue and you can kind of, it, it will kind of do some varying things. You just have to experiment depending on the brushes that you're using. Okay, so I've got some cool effects with, uh, with the uh, blend modes. So let me add a layer on my layers panel and turn the eyeball off on this background. Now, I wanna paint with a white background so I can see it a little better. You see I have transparency here. When I add this layer, I've got transparency. So I can go up to Edit, Fill, and then pick white. So I have a solid white color so I can kinda of do some more painting without, um, without this layer getting in my way that we just used. Okay, so let's talk a little bit. I'm gonna put this blend mode back up to normal. And I'm going to keep the same brush. And let's talk about opacity now. So the first thing I want to do is if I paint with the opacity at 100%, you're not going to see through to the white background. If I lower this opacity down, and I can do it multiple ways. You can see that I can click on the word opacity and drag to the left and lower it. Or I can also click this little arrow right here, and I can lower it or erase it right there. I can also type the number of the opacity in if I know a specific number that I want to do. So if I lower this opacity, I'm going to change the color here again. So I click on the tool panel, then go in here and change the color. And if I lower the opacity down to, let's say, 58, you'll see that it will blend through to the next one. If I lower it even more, you're going to see that difference there. Look at how I can paint over the tops. It feels like a blend mode, but what it's doing is the opacity is... How, it's, it's, uh, how much transparency is happening with the brush. So if I'm at 36%, so 100% opacity is completely opaque, no transparency. The lower I get with this number means the more transparent I get. So when I paint over that, when I overlap other paints, other brush strokes that, I, that occurred on the screen, you're going to see them through and they'll kind of build up paint. And you can keep painting and it's going to build up your, your paintbrush color over time. So the more you paint, the darker it's going to get. All right, so I'm going to undo that bunch of stuff there and go back to one single brush. And now let's look at this one that's called Flow right here. Now Flow controls the opacity level, level of each individual brush tip. Um, now remember, a brush tip is when I single click right on the screen here. So let me bring my opacity back to 100. When I single click, that's my brush tip. When I paint with it, that's a bunch of brush tips all working together to make that paint stroke. So what the flow does is it's the um, it's kind of the rate of the of the amount of pixels that come out. So of which color is applied to the canvas. So if I lower this uh, this flow down really low, it's gonna build up the um, it's gonna build up the color slower than if I have it up turned up high. And we'll really be able to tell this when we adjust our brush tips here in a minute. All right, so the options bar gives you a good amount of stuff to work with in terms of your brush. And I'm gonna undo all this stuff on my stage, but I wanna open up the brush options panel, which gives me a little bit more to work with. So we go to window and brushes, and you're gonna see here that with the brush panel, we've got a whole bunch of possibilities on the left-hand side. So let's look at those more closely. 
So I'm going to go back to my basic brush. You'll see my lineup of brushes, including the ones that I had just added are in here as well. You're going to see my lineup of brushes. I'm going to go back to the basic brush on my canvas. I'm going to go back to the color black on my toolbar. Now with this brush panel, I'm going to move this right here. With this brush panel, um, the first thing I want to look at is, is that, yes, we can, we can see the same brush options. So we can pick the same brushes that we saw over here in the options panel. And we still have the size thing right here. So that's a size adjustment right there. And you can see that it gives you a little preview down at the bottom when you increase the size. So I can make it really thin, really thick. Now the thing that this has that kind of builds up is, well, and then there's the hardness right there. Right, so I can make it softer and you can see the preview when I lower that down. The other thing that this has that the options panel doesn't have, is it has this little angle adjuster right here. So I can adjust the angle and the width of the brush. So watch out, this is a regular brush tip, circle. Watch how I adjust that angle. And then when I paint on my screen, look at this, on the canvas, I get that angle that I created right there. And if I turn it this way, now my angles go in the other direction. Now right down here, I can put the actual uh, number in degrees right here and the roundness if I want to type those in. You'll see the numbers changing as I go here. And so those numbers correspond right there. I can also flip the brush one way or another, flip X or Y, that's horizontal or vertical with those two things. So if I flip Y, it goes that way. If I uncheck that, look at how the brush goes the other way. All right. so. Down here, I can control the spacing of the brush. So the spacing is each individual tip. Right now, at about 20%, you don't see each individual tip. But as I move this spacing to the right, look at how I can start seeing, well, if I go all the way to the right, there's my brush tip. And this is how the brush gets made. I'm going to go here about maybe 100%. You can kind of see the brush tips right there. So there they are. And this will then affect the flow that we talked about earlier. My flow is at 40%, and now we really see that coming into effect. My opacity is 100, but now my flow is at 40%, and since I increased this, uh, the spacing here of the brush, the, it really affects the flow of the brush. Because remember, the flow is about each individual brush tip and how much ink is coming out of the, your kind of virtual brush when you're painting. So here we go when I'm painting here, uh, and I, if I keep painting, see I'm, keep, I'm scribbling here on the, on the canvas, it's adding more pixels as I go. So it's almost like a real paintbrush in that sense. So if you took a real paintbrush and you started painting with it, and you applied more paint to the canvas and more paint to the canvas, if you have a watered down paintbrush, and you kept applying, well, you're going to build up paint to the, to the canvas. The same thing applies here in Photoshop. So this spacing thing is pretty cool. Um, let me undo some of these objects that I have on the screen. Oops, I want to redo. Uh, so I'm going to step forward there and redo my white screen. Okay, so now that I know that I can kind of adjust kind of spacing and I can adjust the angle here and paint with those, you can see that. I'm going to bring my flow back up to 100%. You can see the flow back to 100. If the flow is down at, let's say, 70, you're going to see that difference. And let me zoom in on this or make my brush bigger. And look at that. There's the flow. And then here's the opacity. I'm going to bring the opacity down. And you're going to see the difference between the flow and the opacity. All right. So it's kind of fun to get the hang of both of those just by experimenting with what they do. Now let's, let's look at these options. I'm going to command Z on this. Let's look at the options on the left hand side here for the brush tip. First thing I've got is shape dynamics. If I click that, you can see that there's a whole bunch of settings going on on the right hand side. Here's size jitter. Jitter is kind of randomness. So if I increase the size jitter to my brush, you'll, you'll see that the option down here shows that it's, that it's kind of randomizing the brush tip. And when I paint with this, you're going to see kind of randomized brush tip sizes with that size jitter. If I increase it even more, you're going to see more randomness. So it's going to kind of randomly, when you're, when you're painting, give you different sizes to that brush tip. Then I've got the kind of uh, minimum diameter. If I increase that to the right, they're all about the same. But if I increase it to the, or if I decrease it down to the left, 
then you're really seeing size changes quite a bit here. Angle jitter is kind of the direction of your brush tip, and so by increasing the jitter, you're increasing the randomness of the brush tip. So you can see where I've got this, and now look at how the circles now become more random. My brush tip is still the same, if I just sing, but if I single click a bunch, it's gonna even randomize each one of those single clicks that I make. So look at how they're going in different directions. Pretty cool. Roundness jitter, just what you kind of think what it would do. It's gonna kind of create more ovals, variation between ovals and round. So there's a lot of options just with that one shape dynamics going on right there. So I'm gonna undo these. And if I go to scattering, if I check this, and how do I know I'm editing scattering? Well, I have to click on it to know that I'm editing it. It becomes this blue color. And I can, you can see down here when I turn scattering on what happens. And when I click on my screen, it's going to scatter that brush. And I can increase the scattering or decrease it. And I can make it go on both axes, both X and Y. So when I paint, it's going to scatter X and Y. Pretty cool. Command Z, undo that, and I can also change the count of this. So they're gonna kind of get closer together if I increase the count, and when I scatter it, it does that. Command Z, undo. Now I'm gonna uncheck that scattering, and texture is kind of interesting. It will combine a texture that's within Photoshop, and there's a few preloaded, and you can add more textures, just like we talked about with adding more brushes. They're right here. And what texture does is it will combine a texture with your brush tip and it really applies it to the outer edge kind of of the brush it's kind of hard to see some of these you have to kind of experiment with different textures with your brushes I don't use it that much but it can be pretty cool dual brushes is kind of nice where it'll add it picks a secondary brush to add now if you'll notice I've got this kind of scrubby brush down here and look at how my brush tip in the uh, preview of it shows that it's changed so I'm going to increase my size here so you can see this. So watch when I paint with this. It's going to kind of do both brushes together. It's going to do that kind of scrubby brush with my circle together. And you can see the circles kind of inside the uh, rough edged brush. So that's like having two paint brushes in your hand at once if you're an artist. All right, I'm going to undo that. Now the one I really love is color dynamics. And I'm going to check that click on it so we can edit it, but I do have to have color in here. I can't have a black brush for this to work. So I'm gonna to click to, let's say, green. And you'll notice that when I just paint with this, it doesn't really do much right at the start if I don't edit anything. So it's just gonna take that green and I have my flow down. I'll bring my flow up a little bit. But if I go here, I wanna make sure apply per tip is checked because each brush tip then will have a different color. And then I can increase this foreground background jitter, increase the hue, and when I paint with this, you're going to see that green kind of have varying levels of green. If I increase the hue a little bit more, look at how the green is now adding some blues in there and some yellows, and I'm just holding my mouse down and painting. If I increase the saturation, it's going to, this is going to become less pastel-y looking, so let me let me increase my opacity to 100 and my flow to 100 so you can really see this. So if I increase my saturation, look at how the colors become really saturated. Watch when I go all the way more to the right. The colors become less pastel. If I go to the left, the colors, right, the saturation is not as much. All right, and then I've got brightness. If I go to the right, the brightness will come down. If I go to the left, the brightness will increase. So that's pretty fun too. Purity level, if I take it all the way to the left, it's kind of, will be at white. And I can just kind of move it up and you'll see some of that color come in. So this is where you'll kind of make more subtle colors, let's say. All right, so the color dynamics is really fun to play with. You can get some, a lot of great effects in there. Transfer, what it does is it builds up paint effects, kind of like the flow and opacity. So with transfer, you're going to see through to the, um, to the objects below, and I can uh, increase the opacity jitter on that, and you're going to see through. Uh, kind of difficult to see. Let me, get a, let me get a darker color here. 
and you can see through, there you go, you can see through that. And I have no opacity on my options bar or flow. That's all happening with this transfer. And you can, so you can kind of get some great textures kind of going through the brush. Uh, brush pose, you can't really edit the brush pose. This is, um, this just kind of adds uh, a little bit more of the dynamics for, for color. One that I like a lot is adding wet edges to this. So it'll kind of create more of a um, painterly effect. Kind of hard to see with these circles on here. It's better if I had a brush tip that was more like a, a regular paintbrush. So you can really kind of create a lot of things with these uh, brush tips uh, options right in here in the brush tip uh, presets. And we can add more to these if we want. Let's do that next. So what I want to do is I'm going to uncheck all that stuff. I'm going to go back to my brush tip and kind of bring my spacing back to normal. Uh, kind of, I'll leave this stuff on. This is fine. And let's go and make our own brush now. So what I want to do is I'm going to get rid of that for a second and make another layer here. Uh, fill this with white. So I'm going to go to edit, fill, fill the context with, with white. And so let's make our own brush on our canvas. So what I'm going to do for this is I can use anything to make this. I can, I'm going to go and use the pencil tool. So I'm going to hold my mouse down on the tool panel, get the pencil tool, and just kind of create, I don't know, it could be anything here. Just a kind of a circle pattern. So there I go. Didn't even worry about the size of my brush at all, my pencil brush. So now what I want to do is I want to select this scribble that I made. I'm going to go to the rect rectangular marquee tool and I'm going to draw a box around this. I could also use the magic wand tool, I guess, and select the actual lines. I'm just going to draw a marquee around this. I'm going to get the marching ants. That means I have a selection. I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to go to define brush preset. You can see that it gives me a little dialog box right here and I could name it if I want. I could, you know, say Curtis Brush, one, whatever, and click OK. Now, nothing happens right away. I have to Command D, deselect my marching ants. And if I go back to my brush, so I'm going to go over to the Tools panel, go back to my brush, and if I open up my Options bar and I go all the way down to the bottom, look at that. There's my brush. And when I hover my mouse over the canvas, there's my brush. Now, I can single... Right? Single click, and I've got that same brush tip making a pattern, and I can also paint with it, just like any other brush. And I can also open up my options bar, or my window uh, where my brushes panel is, and I can also edit that brush just like we edited any of the other ones. I can change the angle, right? I can go and add any shape dynamics, I can change the spacing of it. So you can really create some cool effects with this. I love this, where I, I decrease the spacing on this quite a bit. So it creates this really kind of cool effect here where I'm seeing through to the other object. And if I change my opacity and my flow, I'd probably get some really great effects on here, but my opacity especially. Okay, so let's say I wanted to make a brush out of a graphic image or even a photograph, but I'll pick a graphic image. I found something off the internet and I, I made it easy on myself. I found something with a white background, so this would be basic to make a brush out of. So I've brought it onto my canvas here. You'll notice it's on its own layer. I can even get rid of the white around um, the outside of it. So I'm going to hit the check mark um, to because I sized it. I'm going to go here to my magic wand tool, select around the outside, and hit delete. So that will actually clear the white. So I just have this skull here. Command D will deselect that. And now I can create this into a brush. I can go to my marching ants and I can select or the marquee tool. I can go to the marquee tool and, and I want to get marching ants around this. So I can go and select around or I can select it with any of my selection tools. And then I go up here to edit and define brush preset just like we did when we make our little scribble drawing. And you'll see there's our skull right there. I could name this and click OK. And I'm going to Command D and deselect the marching ants because if I leave those on and I paint, it's only going to paint inside the marching ants. I want to show you that. Let me let me uh, get rid of this skull here now. I'm going to hit delete and create a new layer. Okay, so when I create this new layer 
And let's just say that uh, I'm going to paint with that skull in a second, but let me add some marching ants here just to show you this kind of technique. So I've got a square here, and if I go to my paintbrush, or a rectangle, if I go to my paintbrush, and sure enough, my skull is in my lineup there in the uh, options, and there it is. When I hover my mouse over the screen, there's my skull. Now notice when I'm painting with it, it's only going to paint inside those marching ants. That's kind of a cool feature in Photoshop that if you make a selection, Command D, I'm going to undo that really quick. If, and here I'll just draw a freeform selection with my lasso tool. So go to my lasso tool and I'll just create some sort of uh, form there. And then I'll go to my paintbrush and I'll decrease the size of my skull here so he's a little smaller. And when I paint, you're going to see that it will only occur inside my marching ants. This is very nice. All right, so I just wanted to show you that real quick. So I'm going to undo this and Command D. Let's look at that brush that we made. Here it is. Here's my skull that I created. If I click once, it's the brush tip. Um, with imagery, it comes out where I've got, so I have to just check my opacity and my flow. But you're going to see that it is or does already have an opacity to it by default with imagery with gra uh, because it's got to render this kind of with gray in it too. So, and you'll notice it's a single color. That's my color on my, that I picked for my color picker. So let me go, I can pick another color and whatever I select, that's gonna be the color of my skull. If I single click, it's the brush tip, right? If I paint with it, it's gonna be a brush, just like any other brush. And it'll create a pattern. And I can go to my brush panel here and I can change any of the settings, right? I can change the spacing. So if I do that, then I can create this skull pattern where you can see the skull a little bit more. Pretty nice. So that's it with brushes um, for this tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you soon.